Hello and welcome to Furious Tea Break, the little offshoot side channel of Furious driving itself where we ramble about other things that aren't the main content for the main channel. But if you like this, then do maybe consider hitting subscribe to this channel and of course have a look at the main channel itself if you've never found this channel before, which I hope you have because it's fun. I hope. Right, so this is Happy New Year Day. So Happy New Year to you and yours. It's the beginning of another year on furious driving and of course the rest of the world as well. Should probably get a mention as other people are gonna do stuff too, I would imagine. But let's take a quick look back at 2023, the year that was. Another one goes out, another one bites the dust. And uh, appropriately, we're sitting right now in the latest acquisition, the newest member of the fleet, our most recent friend, if you like. Because 2023 was a busy year. It doesn't feel like I did a lot, but in fact, looking back at everything that happened, it, it filled quite a lot of notes in my notebook. So let's put the coffee down and have a quick skim through all the stuff that happened, or at least as much as I could remember. Now, furious driving is all about, well, enjoying cars really, fixing them and to a large extent driving them. Now, I don't think we squeezed in quite as many drives as we did in 2022. 51 in total, 51 different cars driven, all unique and different to the rest. Uh, 39 of them were either retro or classic or vintage. I'm defining retro as anything over 10 years old and not a brand new car. 39 of them were that, 12 were brand new cars or relatively new cars. The oldest car being the 1929 Ford model AA truck, which was a handful, but huge fun. I mean, that thing was, yeah, terrifying and exhilarating in equal measure as pre-war cars so often are. And the newest car was a BYD Seal, a car which had only, well, fact, not even sure it was on sale at all at the time I did the test drive because it was a pre launch uh, press car, which at that point still had the indicators on the right-hand stalk. Uh, production cars are going to get them on the left-hand stalk. I'll run a list of all these cars up the screen, but as you know, I do try and find some real rarities and unusual things. So we've drove a Renault Frigat, which is possibly one of one or two, a Peugeot 309, but an absolute original base model. Uh, one owner, I think, before the, the current owner. Um, what else we got? VW Phaeton, that's fairly new, but when did you last see a VW Phaeton? Uh, S Max, they're disappearing. Two Wolseleys, the 1822, which was the last ever Wolseley. Of course, the 1460, which I didn't include in my count up actually. I made this list before I drove that. So <laughs> I've actually done 52 cars, and uh, 40 of them are classic because the 1460, which came out on Friday, that is uh, another rarity. Daimler Majestic Major, I think there's a dozen of those on the on the road. Uh, gosh, I forgot we drove a Mark IV Cherokee back in the snow in the, in the springtime. Mark I Kia Pride, that feels like a lifetime ago as well. Even got to drive a Ferrari F550. So yeah, some real interesting stuff on the old cars. And uh, with the new things, again, this feels like a lifetime ago as well, a Renault Alpine. I'll be honest, I'm probably the only motoring journalist who wasn't blown away with it. I didn't like the steering or the automatic. But coming into the new year, I want to try and make sure we get more furious driving test drives in the bag for 2024. So I'm gonna try and hit more classic cars, more new cars. Maybe we'll manage to do two a week. So a classic car on the Friday and a new car on the Monday. That's always been the plan, but they're very, very time consuming. And if there's lots of projects needing fixing, it's hard to balance the time between the others. And sometimes something has to give and often it's getting a test drive done. However, driving cars is what we're all about on furious driving. And we did manage to get a couple of road trips in and something I've been planning to do for a long time is finally used the Volvo 740 for an adventure because that was bought back in 2020 for an adventure video series that was never happened because of COVID. Finally though, we got to take the car back to Gothenburg. Yeah, we jumped on a ferry and we crossed France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, Denmark, into Sweden and we had a great time and finally saw the Volvo Factory Museum just in time because I think it's been closed down now. I think they're gonna refurbish it and reopen it, but I don't think it'll be as grand when it reopens. So we were very lucky to get that in the in the nick of time. And every border crossing we went through, the security people who, if they did stop us, what are you doing? We're driving to Sweden, how long for? A weekend. The confusion from these uh, border crossing people was palpable, frankly. It was very amusing. Of course, it wasn't without incident. We uh, broke down naturally just outside Gothenburg, and thankfully, Adam from Living with a Classic, he came and rescued us. We were English people driving an old Swedish car in Sweden, and he came and rescued us. A Swedish man driving an old British car rescued us in a Jaguar XJ, which was hilarious, and towed us off the motorway that rode and helped us sort out our clutch. And of course, we did the Le Mans Classic, which was a great weekend away. I had planned to take the Crown Victoria, but as you may know, that 
that didn't go entirely to plan so we didn't do a road trip video as such we just tootled across in the mercedes c250 because we was going with two sort of fairly large friends and realistically there's only a car we'd all fit into so yeah that stopped being a road trip video and became a video about the Le Mans classic which was just a really in interesting and fun weekend and finally just a little on we did a weekend in the wire edge mini the um southwestern minis group organized a fantastic isle of wight weekend at the um at the airfield the airport on the isle of wight and we got to go there never been to the isle of wight for a holiday so it was great to, to take the family across and get to enjoy the little wire edge mini as it should be because it's a mini adventure and you need mini adventures of course i mentioned i'm sitting in the latest acquisition it's been a good year for buying cars not a great year for selling cars unfortunately it started off with the flipping series which is something i wanted to get going throughout the entire year um, we started off well we had the mondeo which we rescued just before Christmas 2022 that was a great series got the car back on the road rescued it it's still with my friend Tim who's actually got a car for sale at the moment so if you want a good Mark 1 Mondeo it's a really really good price it's just past its MOT again so uh, yeah that's available for sale right now get in touch if you're interested flip that for a VW Beetle I was going to flip that for a car and profit unfortunately as so often happens with my life we found rust in it so we just flipped it purely for the Fiat Idea with no extra cash. Fiat Idea was a fun car. We took that to the NEC Resto show in the springtime. That's where I first met my later acquisition, the Mark 1 Punto. Uh, but we swapped the Fiat Idea for a Rover 75. And that's where the whole thing just came to a crashing halt because I really, really liked that car. So I held on to it for far too long. But that then I hung on to finally to the end of the year. And that's gone over to Stone Cold Classics where it's having a little bit of lack appeal sorted out and a few little stone chips and things sorted out before it goes on sale. And they're gonna get back to me when that's on then we had a little brush with a third Fiat, the Brava. Um, so we had the idea that later on the Punto and finally the Brava, which we only owned for a couple of weeks. It was a very quick selling bring in did virtually nothing to it and it sold virtually instantly before I even had a chance to wash it. Then the third Fiat to come into the fleet was the Punto, the oldest Fiat Punto in Britain. Parked alongside it at the NEC back in the springtime. Really, really liked the car. I love the interior. I love the kind of weird pinky red colour on it, the metallic. And in fact, we've owned Puntos in the past. And it's a real lovely piece of nostalgia to, to get back behind the wheel of one. That was great to, to finally get the opportunity to own the oldest Punto in Britain. And that's now tucked away in the barn where it's nice and safe at the moment. And also, well, this one, this is another unintended purchase it was on the cards that it was going to be for sale and the owner was going to finally get rid of it and so i had to jump in and buy the thing and i do not regret buying it at all because this is one of the most fun cars you can possibly own the the fleet is now i think currently numbering about 16 cars because the 75 is still technically in my name yeah something i wish i'd probably got rid of sooner perhaps it's a lovely car but it's just one too many. I haven't just bought cars though. I've been to look at lots of other cars. Started off with the NEC Classic back in the springtime. Then of course we popped down to the Bewley Auto Jumble. That's something I've not done for a long time. We did the Festival of the Unexceptional. Took the little Fiat Punto up to that one. That's a great day out. We did the Lagonda Collection, which is the incredible collection in London. Where a guy has collected just literally hundreds of cars. We visited Valley Gas Speed Shop down in Andover, the home of the Hot Rod. And they've got like a production line of incredible, unique vehicles. We had a look around the Gaydon um, Heritage Museum and the, the main Gaydon Museum, the Overflow Museum in a separate video with the storage of the stuff you can look around the stuff that's not on display the Jaguar Heritage Museum and of course we had a long look at the Rover Turbine cars which are an amazing could have been and of course we did the British Motor Heritage Archive as well so we got heritage certificates for my classic Mini we got the heritage certificate for the Freelander of course we did the Volvo Museum in Gothenburg mentioned that already and finally rounded the year off with the NEC trip back in November where I took the 200VI and the epic getting home adventure when of course it burst a, uh, a coolant pipe oh and also there's been other little things as well I did the Freelander and his own artwork created by Pop Bang Colour when he did a little interview with me. So that's a little road trip and an artwork. And of course we've done the Furious Driving Events again with this year. We've been, been to the Motorist and the place in Horsham whose name I've temporarily forgotten. But that was a lovely little day out and places I plan to try and get back to again in the coming year. And of course next year we have got something enormous happening on March the 9th. So I saved the day for that because myself, Ian from Hubnut and Steph from Driver Classic, we've all got big big plans which i hope you're going to be able to make it down to but in terms of the project it's been a mixture of good and bad news the p6 v8 that i shipped off at the beginning of last year because it wouldn't fire up the place i took it to they did get it fired up but then they abandoned it in a, in a yard for 10 months where it just got spoiled and finally took it up to hawk classics where we've got the thing actually started and running and now the thing does run and drive and we just need to do the finishing touches in the next few days weeks before the end of the month hopefully this thing will be actually driving again w123 which you saw the other day in a video that almost worked but then it got stuck in the garage behind well the baddest news of the year the crown victoria 
here. Oh, this was the shock of the, the year, shock of the decade. My beautiful rust-free one police force user, owner, whatever you want to call it, low mileage Crown Victoria, shipped all the way from Ohio. Turned out to be full of rust, no sills, and that was a massive blow. And uh, that spent a lot of time being welded across the summertime. So it's had a complete new inner and outer sill down one side, and I'm ready to start on the other side now when the rain stops. I mean, this you might be able to hear above me is the um, the roof of the new Lean To carport which we built the other day. Extra little thing which does make life a lot better and easier so hopefully we'll be able to make use of that. The 420 Rover Estate that's disappeared off the paint. Um, I'm happy for them to keep it as long as they want because it means I've not got to pay for it or store it. Uh, the Freelander prop shaft decided to um, make horrible noises we did that. We stripped the 1969 Mini down to a bare shell. Uh, the Rover 75 got proper new wood steering wheel and dashboard. It also broke down several times and needed new coil packs it turned out. Um, the MOT fails for the Freelander land of the 400 the 200 those have all failed the crown victoria's failed an mot yeah everything's failed an mot at some point this year i think <laughs> it's always a given i think it's going to fail rather than pop and the other big thing of course this year is merchandise we've got a lot of new merchandise done russ wallace uh, the art automotive illustrator has done some beautiful artwork of all the cars apart from this one 10 mugs of the freelander look really really good we gave the um the roof tent lots of use on hippo hippo was going to be another one for the chop i have to admit i was going to get rid of the freelander but it turns out that but I'm not allowed to. Um, Mrs. Furious and who's now appeared on the channel and Furious Jr. have both said no well, that one and this one are their favourite car and they're not allowed, I'm not allowed to sell them so yeah we're, we're kind of stuck with that one something else is going to have to find a new home right so that was 2023 but what about 2024 well lots more happening of course not letting things stagnate trying not, not to let things sit more road trips though that's the other thing I'm going to spend more time fixing the cars getting more cars completed maybe some more cars brought in and sold on get the flipping series back on the boil again because that was something I really enjoyed just getting my teeth into a car getting it fixed getting it gone and moving on to something different really did enjoy doing that and you guys seem to enjoy it as well the trouble is I just find I like cars too much um, and I just get emotionally attached to them and part of my dream if you like is to have like a museum level uh, collection of cars. I visited the Great British Car Journey recently and that was a personal collection which became a museum and that is kind of my dream if you like and that's sort of why I don't want to get rid of cars because if I've got a good example of one, I would love it to be in part of something that maybe we can share more. Obviously I'm sharing here on the internet, but share it in person as well somehow. Have a venue where people could visit, but that's a long way away and very much a pipe dream. Ultimately, it would have been amazing if I could have uh, put an offer in on the old Roots garage, which you saw the video of back in 2020, which was Roots factory and showroom in the middle of Maidstone. That would have been the ideal home for a motor museum, but, but that needed Mm, several million spending on buying and restoring the place and so it's becoming flats of course sympathetically and true to the Art Deco style but flats nonetheless and not a car museum which is what it would have been perfect for it even had a reinforced upstairs so you could park cars upstairs as well what more could you want that would have been ideal maybe I'll win the lottery in the next few days I'll buy them out and <laughs> change the direction of that project <laughs> Furious driving 2024 is hopefully going to be good. More road trips, more European trips, take these cars different places around Britain, maybe around Ireland, certainly into the continent, get, get different places and enjoy these things as they're intended. Maybe some track days as well, because obviously this, the 200VI, the Rover Coupe, those are all intended for going quickly. And we need to go quickly in these things. Maybe we'll even get to go further afield, head over across the Atlantic and go to America for some videoing as well. That would be really cool as well. So hopefully, there's enough to keep you entertained in the coming months to keep you watching and help you have a fantastic 2024, which I hope you do. So I hope you had a great Christmas and I hope you have a happy new year and I hope you keep watching. <laughs> so as always, like and subscribe to this one. If you haven't subscribed to Furious Driving main channel, then go and hit that one as well. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.